I'm here with Mr. Harune Idrisu, who is Minister of Communications for Ghana. Mr. Idrisu, thank you very much for being with us today. My pleasure. I'd just like to start off by asking you, Ghana will be present at the ITU Telecom World 2012 to be held in Dubai this October. Ghana was also an active participant at last year's event in Geneva. What are the main benefits for you and your country's presence on the show floor with the National Pavilion? We definitely will participate in Telecom World event as we have always done, fundamentally for four principal reasons. It is the best platform and indeed a global platform where champions and global leaders showcase convergence in technology, excellent technology evolving around the world. So it affords us an opportunity to market the potentials of ICT in Ghana and to share and benefit from other people's experiences and their technologies in order to leverage on the social and economic development of our country. We have always believed that information and communication technology is a prime enabler of social and economic uh, development. So we would be in Dubai, we would be represented by our major telecom operators in our country, whether it's uh, MTN, Vodafone, Tigo, Airtel, or Expresso. They would all be there together with our Universal Access Fund, which is doing wonderful things, particularly for persons with disability, to improve their lot and to use technology to give them some psychological comfort and to earn some income. The Leadership Summit at Telecom World 2012 will be focusing on fostering and managing innovation. I'd like to ask you, how important a role does stimulating innovation in the ICT sector have to play in Ghana, in Africa, or indeed throughout the world? It is important for us to take advantage of ICT, particularly its applications, to improve the way government does business, whether it's e-parliament, e-justice, e-immigration, e-commerce or e-agriculture. It also facilitates open and transparent running of government and more importantly reducing the cost of doing business. And today the mobile phone is no longer a tool of luxury. It's become very critical even for emergency response. Whether there was a storm or a natural disaster or an accident, you could rely on the power of the phone because of its reliability and content in order to reach out to other persons affected by it. So we think that world leaders will meet to share experiences, discuss matters of technology transfer and issues bordering on skills development and how those skills can be transferred. Following your keynote speech at the 7th ITU Symposium on ICTs, the Environment and Climate Change early this year, and in the light of the recent debates in Rio, what concrete steps can governments take to encourage a green and sustainable economy? Governments are obliged to strengthen policy and regulatory activities that will assure the environment of abuse. And policy and regulatory, uh, ish, uh, policy and regulatory institutions must be strengthened to play their applied role in ensuring sustainable management of the environment. ICTs are both contributors to global gas emissions and can also be a solution or a panacea to environmental uh, emissions. So we both are a cause to the environment and we also can be a solution. Particularly for manufacturers of ICT equipment, they must employ energy efficient mechanisms in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and also for governments to intensify public uh, education generally for the public and citizens to be aware and conscious of the need to protect the environment and to be mindful of the damage and benefits associated with ICTs and the environment and also for an efficient management of electronic waste particularly for those of us in the developing countries we are deeply concerned about the use of uh, the underdeveloped world as dumping grounds for redundant electronic waste, particularly those countries that have already concluded their migration from analog to digital radio and television, maybe dumping those obsolete equipments in Africa and in other parts of the underdeveloped world. We would need an efficient 
electronic waste management system. Smart applications across a range of industry sectors will be high on the agenda at Telecom World 2012. How can private and public investment in smart technologies best be fostered, do you think? Through government providing an enabling and congenial environment for the private sector to thrive. Given Ghana as an example, the ICT sector is largely private sector led with their own investment whether in fiber or in infrastructure, government concentrates only on matters of last mile effect. Now with smart technologies, it's improved technology and you need to take advantage of it. Now you can move with a computer in your palm, depending upon whether you're using a Blackberry or a Samsung or a Nokia phone, which will allow you for e-applications to transact business, whether in banking, in commerce, and as I said earlier, immigration. It allows because of speed, what we need to do is bandwidth availability and capacity. And uh, fortunately, Ghana has 7.6 terabyte capacity of bandwidth. We connected to the global submarine cables, GLOW-1, MAIN-1, SAT-3, and the West African cable system. So we think that smart applications must lead the world in terms of technological innovation. And finally, I'd like to ask you, what is the key value for you attending Telecom World 2012? And what's the main message you'd like to convey to its uniquely influential audience? To showcase Ghana's ICT potential investment in the information and communication technology sector, we are looking forward to public-private partnerships in building a viable ICT sector of our country. For instance, Ghana just commissioned a free zones enclave that we declared for a technology park as in the smart village in Egypt or Silicon Valley in the United States. We want to develop a state-of-the-art technology park that allows for the delivery of IT-related innovation uh, applications and services. We would want to go and showcase our potentials in order to attract investment interest in our ICT sector. And we also want to benefit from emerging technologies, how it will benefit the running of government. But we simply think that as a government, we have put in place regulatory policy requirement which assures investment of the security and tenor of their investment. Minister Harun Udrisham, thank you very much for being with us today. My greatest pleasure. Thank you very much too.